This is Ray Parmenter, the Head of Technology and Policy. Have I pronounced your surname correctly there, Ray? You've pronounced the surname correctly, but you've got the job title slightly wrong. It's Policy oh. and Technical. Policy and Technical. I do yeah. apologise. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're just going to talk a little today about um, a couple of topics which I know our readers are um, a little concerned about at the, uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. Uh, firstly, of course, is the uh, HGV uh, driver shortage, mm -hmm. uh, which has been quite front and centre of the news at the moment. Um, yeah. So can I ask, um, what is, as far as you're aware, what's the, uh, what's the scale of the, of the problem? How many of the CIWM members are having issues with uh, with a shortage of drivers? The, the issue of driver shortages is broadly applicable to quite a lot of our members, actually, um, from local authorities and from the uh, commercial industrial side of the, you know, the sector as well. So they're all facing these difficulties together. Um, but um, it's not just um, about household waste collections in the bin man itself. It's, it's broader than that. It's across the whole transport chain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just the collection of the bins, it's the then the, the movement of the waste from the transfer stations to the landfills and the energy from waste plants and water, the recycling infrastructure, the whole sort of like logistics chain is affected by this driver shortage. Sure. Yeah. And export as well, because... Uh... Yes, yeah, so, so stuff leaving the country has got to get to the port somehow, it usually has to go on a lorry. Um, more cases than not so yeah it's going to affect that in an equal measure as well yeah. absolutely um to the best of your knowledge um how long do you think the this situation has been has been brewing well it's kind of been brewing ever since we left the european union at the beginning of the year mm. um, i mean when i was in industry back in sort of 2018 before i joined the environment agency for a little while um we could see this sort of coming over the horizon. Mm. Um, but um, it's kind of been exacerbated to some extent by this sort of the pandemic and the, the COVID effects as well. Um, we haven't quite factored that in, I guess. Um, so it's it's kind of been snowballing, I guess, for the last six or so months uh, into the situation we're currently in now. Sure. Yeah. Um, Bit of a perfect storm. Almost, yes. Almost mm. a bit like that, yeah. But would you say, um, well, Brexit, for example, was, um, say, the, the, the key factor in this? I think so, yes. Um, I mean, you just have to look at the, the letter that was written by the ESA, jointly signed mm -hmm. by the CIW and others, that it was asking for a relaxation to the immigration's point-based system. Yes. Um, and that basically is, 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 your, is your key key point, I guess. It's, it's the immigration uh, which is holding back the employment of HGV drivers in this country, at least as a mm. temporary solution anyway. Certainly. Yeah. Um, what do you, in your opinion, what do you think the government um, can do to uh, support businesses throughout this situation? Well, they've done a little bit already. They've sort of supported us in relaxing the, the driver's hours um, mm -hmm. requirements. So that's helped a little bit. But, I mean, there are some safety concerns around that relaxation, of course. Mm. Um, drivers, drivers overworked, um, creating a, a bit of an issue from road safety point of view. Um, they've re they've rolled out some more initiatives around driver training, um, so that's helping. But that will only help in the longer term. It's not going to help in the short term acute problem that we've got at the moment, driver shortages. Um, yeah, the. the Environment Department, DEFRA, has been very helpful as far as we're concerned. Uh, okay. They've been lobbying other government departments. They've been doing a weekly sort of pulse check on driver availability and driver issues with the with the sector as well. So they're doing they're doing a lot, but we're quite disappointed with the response we got from the government to our letter to the Home Secretary saying, you know, basically we've just got to get on with it and train the drivers um, ourselves. Right. Um, yeah, they did, so, the Home Office did actually reply. Flat they out. did actually reply, yeah. And that's, that's in essence what they said. I mean, right. if you want a copy of the letter, I'm sure I could send you a copy. Please, yeah. that would be great yeah. to put up, yeah. Um, okay, I, I do have a copy of the, the letter that was sent, but yeah. Yeah, if you, if you, you haven't got a copy of the reply. Right. Yeah, I'll make a note to send that to you, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so in general, would you rate the government's response so far as being a mixed bag? 
A mixed bag, yeah. It depends on the department, I think, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so looking at the um, the SMEs themselves, uh, mm. the, the the waste firms, the skip firms, uh, what do you think the key things that they are that they can do uh, to help themselves through this? Sadly, I don't think there's an awful lot they can do. Um, mm. There, are, drivers have been pulled this way and that way um, with more attractive offers from different sectors. Um, mm. And small businesses can't always can't always match that um, form of remuneration or um, kind of package that they're being offered by the likes of Amazon or Tesco's or whoever you know to come and deliver food or parcels. Yeah, so they're kind of in a kind of in a difficult situation, I guess. SMEs uh, they want to retain drivers. I guess they can try and make it more attractive for, for the drivers to stay, but they are kind of tied by their economics, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So just another case of uh, SME companies um, suffering at the hands the of the bigger. Yeah. 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 Sadly. Um, so, yeah. Do you think there's any um, signs of uh, the situation improving in the in the in the short term, or do you think this is going to go for a long? long I think time? this is going to rumble on until Christmas at least. Um, right. <clears throat> My feeling is personally, I mean, you've got the pressures from the post office yet to be felt because they, mm. they will be ramping up deliveries. The delivery companies will start ramping up their requirements as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have additional requirements over the Christmas period in our own sector to try and meet as well. So all these competing demands can't really see there being any sort of respite until after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully some new drivers will come online by that point as well. We'll get some drivers trained up and ready to go by then. But it takes yeah. months. It's not, not an easy fix. No, it certainly isn't. No. Okay, thank you. Um, the, there was another issue I wanted to talk to you about. Red which diesel, is, uh, yeah. Red diesel, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, so obviously the, uh, the tax... Um, I the, the rebate is rebated yeah. fuel. The rebated that's fuel, it. And that's isn't it? Being, yeah. uh, that's yeah. being taken away as of yeah. the first of April next year. Yeah. Um, so, in a uh, so in, just in a nutshell, uh, for the sake of our readers, what do you think that did the um, the 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 takeaway changes for that if, is for our sector? Bottom line, I think is is, is where it, where it will sit. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to affect costs. Uh, it, uh, cost of running. Um, not just yellow plant, but all, all sorts of equipment which run on the rebated fuel is going to be affected by this. So at the end of the day, it's going to be feed through to the bottom line and into gate fees. Mm -hmm. And that's going to go on to presumably to consumers, including local authorities. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, would you say that this change was uh, a responsible move on behalf of the government? It depends on how you view it. From an environmental point of view, it makes perfect sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, from a climate change perspective, as well, particularly with COP26 coming out uh, up in November. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, from a climate point of view, it works. Uh, it, it, works. Um, it may not necessarily be the best thing for the, the sector. Uh, the sector has been doing an awful lot over the last 30-odd years to decarbonise. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like we've been taxed yet again um tax on maybe the green economy perhaps is, is one way of looking at it. I think it's the way the ESA uh, put it forward in their response to the consultation last year. Um they also face another quite a, another challenge in the next few years as well to decarbonize the collection fleet. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you're aware, but there's a consultation from the Department of Transport at the moment to um move to zero emission HGVs by right. 2030. So these, these are all challenges for the sector um, mm -hmm. um, to decarbonise, and it's going to have a cost implication, I guess. Yeah. I mean, do you think that um, the businesses in our sector should really try and take the opportunity to um, try and seek out um, alternatives, green, yeah. green sources of fuel? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, there are green solutions out there. You can use things like... Um, compressed natural gas, I think it is, in those kinds mm -hmm. of engines, um, which, again, can come from a renewable source, such as landfill sites or energy uh, from anaerobic digestion. You can get uh, compressed natural gas from those. 
Um, and I think they, if they're for transport purposes, then they can be subject, I think, to the renewables obligation as well, okay. transport fuel obligation. Um, not 100% certain of that, but that might be a possibility to look at. Sure. Yeah. I suppose the question that our readers really want to know is, is it always going to be a more expensive option uh, to go with a more ecological uh, fuel source? I think that's, broadly speaking, the for all of, of the climate change and the green agenda proposals, there are always going to cost more. Um, mm -hmm. I saw something recently about... Um, electrification of vehicles uh, yes. from the Tony Blair Institute, I think it was, or something like that, mm -hmm. about uh, road pricing maybe, um, or taxation increases for consumers to offset the, the loss of government revenue um, faced by not having petrol and diesel duty any longer because of mm -hmm. every car, all the cars are electric. So there is going to be a cost that meant to all of this uh, green agenda. So my sector is going to be no different to any others, I guess.